Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Thomas Lord Cromwell and we only have two monologues left to go before we're done with this play. And things have gotten rather dire for Thomas Cromwell. Uh, the Bishop of Winchester, along with du the Dukes of Norfolk and Suffolk, decided that they wanted him gone. So they hired some people to swear that they overheard Cromwell say he wanted to kill the king. So now Cromwell has been arrested for treason. And since he's been found guilty of treason, they can execute him without an actual trial. But at the beginning of this scene, he was sort of ruminating on that and what a predicament he's in. And he finally read the letter that Bedford had sent to him that said, don't go to Lambeth, which is where he got arrested and how he was finally caught. So he's very distraught about that. But then uh, the Dukes of Norfolk and Suffolk and Bedford and the Bishop of Winchester all came in to see him in the Tower of London. And there's been, Cromwell's gotten a little, a little snippy, as is maybe his right, since he's about to be executed for not really doing anything wrong. And he asked that a letter be sent to the king and one of the other lords ran off with the letter to take it to the king. And um, the bishop was like, okay, you know, we have the warrant. It's, it's time to get this whole execution thing done. And Cromwell says, I do embrace it. Welcome my last date. And of this glistering world, I take last leave. And noble lords, I take my leave of you. As willingly I go to meet with death, as Garnier did pronounce it with his breath. From treason is my heart as white as snow, my death only procured by my foe. I pray, commend me to my sovereign king and tell him in what sort his Cromwell died to lose his head before his cause were tried. But let his grace, when he shall hear my name, say only this, Garnier procured the same. So this is him getting in some, some last words and some last digs. He's like, you know, it's fine. Okay, take me to be executed. I'm ready for it. That's fine, but it's your fault, Bishop of Winchester. It's your fault. You did this. I am completely innocent. I didn't do anything wrong. This is specifically because you had a vendetta against me and the king's gonna know about that too. And when he hears that I died without a trial, he's gonna know that it was you that did it. Um, so then the, like the jailer says, oh my goodness, your son is here. And Thomas Cromwell's son, who we hadn't met or really even talked about or even really knew existed, except maybe if you study your history, comes in and Cromwell's like, oh, my son, let me give you some fatherly advice. So he gives him some advice that's maybe Polonius-esque, except not quite so silly. So he says his goodbye. And he also reiterates to his son a couple of times that it's because of the Bishop of Winchester that he's dying. And he says it enough times that the Bishop is like, oh, come on now. Like, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm following the law. You were found guilty of treason. Therefore, you are to be executed. And Bedford steps in at this point. He's like, shush. Nobody wants to hear anything that you have to say at this point. So they're moving along. It's getting to be time for Cromwell to be executed. Um, he gets to say a couple last things. And one of those last things that he will say will be our monologue tomorrow, uh, just after the hangman has said, okay, it's, it's time to go. Cromwell is going to get one more nice big monologue before we finish up this play and move on to the next one. So I'll see you tomorrow for a wrap up. Mwah.